This video is brought to you by Incogni. Today, Belarusian dissidents plot a coup against Lukashenko. Iranians go to the polls in the first election since mass protests, and hundreds are killed in Gaza trying to access humanitarian aid. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Friday the 1st of March 2024. It's been reported that a group of Belarusian dissidents are preparing for a coup against the country's authoritarian ruler, Alexander Lukashenko. These dissidents, made up of former Belarusian officers, supported the democratic opposition, led by Svetlana Tikhanovskaya, but fled Belarus to Poland and established a partisan resistance group called BYPOL. A senior figure of BYPOL, Alexander Azarau, spoke to Belgian news outlet VRT News and stated that, from Poland, the organisation is preparing a coup in Belarus. Their strategy, however, requires them to bring down Putin first, which obviously is no easy task. Azarau claimed that BYPOL have been training hundreds of officers and actively sabotaging the Kremlin in its war in Ukraine. They say they're preparing for a possible fight against the regime, but still hope for a peaceful transfer of power. Azarau has stated that the group has been sabotaging Russia to aid Kiev in the war. For instance, in February last year, they claimed responsibility for a drone attack damaging a Russian military aircraft near Minsk. Azarau also claimed that BYPOL has been attacking Russian aircrafts, damaging railways and training Belarusian volunteers. In fact, according to Azarau, around 200,000 people have already registered to take part in the coup in some form. Their plan, as they see it, is that if Ukraine can launch a successful offensive, Putin will no longer have time for Belarus. And without Putin, there is no Lukashenko. Lukashenko has been the head of state since 1994 and has been labelled as essentially Putin's puppet. He's been criticised in the West for his election fraud in 2020, which also led to opposition leader Svetlana Tikhanovskaya being exiled to neighbouring Lithuania. Azarau, who was at the time a security service official, was also threatened by the regime following the elections, and so fled to Poland. Major protests followed the 2020 election, resulting in Putin threatening to send soldiers to Belarus to put down the protest, and thus ensure the power of the pro-Russian Lukashenko. So BYPOL has their work really cut out for them. Azarau therefore hopes for Ukrainian military successes. Such a situation could be an excellent opportunity for the dissidents. We've developed a plan and we will put it into effect at the right time. Their plan may also face a new challenge, as in February, Azarau, along with five other former officers, were convicted in absentia by a Belarusian court. They were found guilty of inciting social hatred, plotting to seize power forcibly, and creating an extremist group called BYPOL. Azarau has received the harshest sentence, 25 years in prison and a fine of around $123,500. You can watch the full interview of Azarau speaking to VRT News, which is linked in the description below. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Iranians are voting in their first parliamentary election since the mass protests of 2022, following the death in police custody of Masa Amini. Specifically, there are two separate elections. Voters are electing new members of parliament, but will also vote for the Assembly of Experts, a powerful body that selects Iran's supreme leader. The Assembly of Experts has an eight-year term. So, with incumbent Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, aged 84 and in questionable health, it's likely that the Assembly of Experts elected this year will indeed choose his successor. Now, the election processes for both Parliament and the Assembly of Experts are tightly controlled, as candidates must be vetted and approved by the Guardian Council. This year, for example, former President Hassan Rouhani, considered a moderate and pragmatist, was barred from standing for re-election to the Assembly of Experts. With the elections tightly controlled, the key thing to look out for is turnout. There have been calls for a boycott, including from imprisoned Nobel Peace Prize laureate Nargis Mohammadi. Low turnout could damage the legitimacy of the Iranian regime. So regime figures like Ayatollah Khomeini have been encouraging people to turn out, saying refraining from voting would not solve anything. In other news, more than 100 Palestinian civilians were killed in Gaza in the early hours of Thursday, 
as huge crowds gathered around trucks delivering humanitarian aid to the north of the Strip. There have been conflicting accounts of what caused the deaths, with Gaza health authorities saying Israeli forces opened fire on the crowds, and Israel saying the crush led to people being run over. While images of the situation are still being analysed, a video obtained by Al Jazeera, taken around 6.10am local time, shows a crowd appearing to flee and duck amid audible gunfire. Israel's military denied shooting into the crowd, although a spokesperson said soldiers fired at a small group that moved away from the trucks and threatened a checkpoint. The UN convened an emergency session on Thursday night, amid mounting international pressure, with the White House calling for deaths to be thoroughly investigated. Moving to South Korea now, where a deadline has passed for striking doctors to return to work or face the possibility of prosecution and losing their medical license. Junior doctors in South Korea have walked off the job for the past week or so in protest against the government's plans to expand medical school enrollment by 2,000 places. The doctors are calling for the government to first address pay and working conditions before increasing the number of medical students. Despite the ultimatum, the Korean Medical Association says we have no change in our plan for protest, though it's up to individual doctors whether they decide to return to work or not. Only 294 doctors have returned to work out of some 9,000 striking doctors, according to the Vice Health Ministry, who said patients are anxiously waiting for doctors to return. This isn't the way to protest against the government. The South Korean government wants to expand the number of places at medical school to address a shortage of doctors. For reference, South Korea has one of the lowest doctor-to-patient ratios in the developed world, and with an ageing population, this will only become a bigger and bigger problem. And finally, we end with the good news that utility-scale solar has dethroned coal as the cheapest source of power in the Asia-Pacific region, and onshore wind is expected to become cheaper than coal after 2025. The 23% drop in solar power costs in 2023 signals the end of supply chain disruptions and inflationary pressures, according to the energy transition news site Electrek. Plus, new build solar project costs are anticipated to drop by a further 20% by 2030. Coal has been a mainstay in the Asia-Pacific region's energy mix, so the increasing competitiveness of renewable energy is important to shifting the region away from fossil fuels. Clearly, the current state of the world is plagued by uncertainty and risk. And while you've been watching this video, your personal information might have been sold or published online without you even knowing it. Even whilst recording videos, we're interrupted by robocalls. And if you're wondering why you also might be getting random numbers calling your phone, well, the answer is the malevolent workings of shady forces called data brokers. These data brokers can collect and sell your personal information to anyone, from a company to an online criminal. This data can include your name and aliases, social security number, login credentials, home address, location, history, online activity, and much more. But even if you're not fussed about a call here and there, one day it could be a little call, but the next a huge loan could be taken out under your name. So if you want to protect your data, Incogni is here to help. Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal, and deals with any objections from their side. Since many data brokers continue collecting your personal information even after they've removed it, Incogni also takes care that your data stays off the market by conducting repeated removal requests. So create an account with our link in the description, grant Incogni the ability to work on your behalf, and sit back as they make you safer. Plus, by using our link, you'll get an exclusive 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Thanks for checking it out, and thanks to Incogni for supporting this video.